Hey there, I'm John Peluso, Vice President of Product Management here at Avpoint, and I'm here with Edmund White, Field Product Manager at Avpoint. Today we're going to talk to you about how you can automate your permissions and security policies within SharePoint. So some of the stories we hear all the time from customers about challenges with permissions management in SharePoint. Um, the first is once you grant a permission to a user, it's there forever. So if we're collaborating on a project that's going to last uh, two weeks, I grant you the permission, um, you have that permission forever. right? Couple this with the fact that in most organizations, there's no periodic review that they do to make sure the permissions are accurate still. Um, if there is a process for review, it's a very manual one. And then finally, most IT departments can't manage all of the security activity in SharePoint themselves, so they delegate that to end users. And one of the challenges there is that end users want things to be easy, so they tend to grant very high permissions to people, maybe um, in ways that override our security policies. So some of the ways that we've enabled our customers to meet these challenges are um, leasing out permissions to specific users for a specific amount of time, um, putting a managed process in place around uh, the review of existing permissions within the environment, and providing a uh, request system or an approval system for all uh, changes in, in permission or granting sharing permissions. So in this demo, we're going to show you how to use some specific permissions management features within governance automation to meet these challenges we're talking about. And the first one we're going to show you is this aspect of temporary or leased permissions. We're also going to see a process called permission recertification, where we're going to engage the business users and um, ask them if these permissions are still relevant or not. And then the final thing we'll show you is how we can both limit the level of permission that can be requested in a governance automation service request, and then also force that request through a structured approval process. So that ideally, right, they can't request the wrong thing, and that any request for permission is forced through an approval process that makes business sense. I've logged into my SharePoint project site as an end user. My task today is to grant access to my colleague to this site uh, so that they can review documents this week. Recently, our policy changed that we're now doing all of our permissions changes through governance automation. The reason why we're doing this is because driving requests through governance automation makes it easy for me as the end user uh, to make changes and uh, ensures that these changes are in compliance with our governance policies. So I've come over to my services catalog and I'm going to click on request access to a workspace. So I'm brought to this request form where I can fill out a little information about what I'm trying to do. You'll see here that we've automatically grabbed the in-context scope uh, of where we were. So I know that my request is going to be applied to uh, the correct site. But what I really want to draw your attention to is down here. Another advantage of using governance automation for these sorts of requests is we can do advanced options such as temporary permissions. So another policy that was put in place was we're only going to grant temporary permissions to these types of sites from now on. What this means is that this permission will expire and be removed after seven days and this is configurable. This is great from a compliance perspective. You won't have permissions hanging around uh, that are no longer necessary. You'll also see below that that I can only grant a permission up to the design level. Uh, we've restricted the permission level that uh, I, can, I can request. So again, after I fill out this form, save and submit, goes through an approval process, gets logged and, and is auditable, and then that change is automatically made in the environment. I'm now logged in as the site contact, or the secondary site contact, for this project site. Now, I've been assigned uh, a task down here 
called Permission Recertification uh, for this particular site collection. Let's click on this and find out what this means. So I'm brought to a task page uh, that's an, a report of all the permissions that are currently assigned to this site. What's happened is when this site was provisioned, our governance policy said that we need to go through and check on a regular basis to make sure that the people who have access to this site are appropriate. So this is exact, exactly what's happened. I was automatically delivered this report and it's now my job to go through and make sure that these are the right people to have in my site. What's interesting here is you'll see at the bottom this red line through CG Admin. What this means is that I'm not the only person reviewing this and that someone else has come through and actually made a change to this permission level. We can see here if I click on this other one, I'm now given the option to either edit the user's permissions or remove them entirely, which is what happened below. If I want to remove this user entirely, it's easy to go to the user-based filter. And select them all at the same time. This way I can remove all of their permissions at once. Of course, all the changes that my colleague and I are making in here uh, are available through our versioning system. So I can go back and look at the, that change that my colleague made uh, before. So after I'm satisfied that these are the, in fact the people who should have access to this site, what I do is I submit this and this is logged as me giving approval at this stage for this, these permissions and this recertification. We can see that through using the services catalog, we've made it easy for an end user to request permissions changes and to apply advanced features such as temporary permissions and limiting the level of uh, permissions that can be requested. Well, we also saw the tremendous time savings that's offered through automating activities such as permission recertifications with governance automation. And then we'll show how we can set up an approval process uh, to get the content owner involved for a manual review of what we found. Power to the people. <laughs>